Good morning, my name is Bob Mackay. I'm one of the leaders here at Milton Baptist Church and it's my privilege to welcome you this morning. As you can see, Sue and I have uh, returned from Snowdonia. We had a lovely time walking in the, the valleys and the hills. We did avoid Snowdon because we heard that the coffee shop and the toilets at the top of the mountain were closed. And uh, quite honestly, who, who wants to get to the top of the mountain and not celebrate with a cappuccino and a chocolate cake So and then a visit to the restroom before returning down? So we gave that bit a miss but everything else was fantastic. Um, As you can see this morning, we're not live. Uh, We felt it really important that uh, we would meet a couple of Sundays in August outside with the rest of the church because at the moment, predominantly, there's a few coming on a Sunday morning live, but the vast bulk of us are still online. So this gives us an opportunity to meet with people in the park and on the beach in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I thought, though, I would just drop something in, uh, just in case people don't read their emails or not on social media, uh, just to say, hi, this is where we are. And uh, just give you a brief uh, talk today uh, to continue the, the, work, uh, the, the stuff that we've been doing on Exodus. Uh, during the last few weeks, we've uh, we've covered hearing God's voice, experiencing his deliverance, trusting in his provision, and becoming God's people. And today's theme is from about chapter 25 of Exodus right through to the end. So I wouldn't be reading that, but you can read that at home. Uh, About the building of God's dwelling place here and the building of the tabernacle, a place where God could dwell amongst his people. Now in the Bible, uh, we read on four occasions and four different places where he dwells amongst his people. He did that in the Garden of Eden. He did that at the tabernacle when uh, he did it when God came in the person of Jesus uh, down to earth. And of course, he dwells with his people when we are in heaven. Uh, His desire is always, always, always to dwell with his people and amongst his people. And uh, Exodus 25, verse 8 said, God said to Moses, have the people of Israel built me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. And so from Exodus 25, right the way through basically to chapter 40, to the end of, of the book, God's meticulous instructions on how the tabernacle should be built. And Hebrew verse, uh, verse 23 in chapter 9 says that he tells us that the tabernacle was actually a copy of the real thing. It was a copy of heaven. So everything that was in heaven was going to be placed in the tabernacle as well. So the tabernacle was a replica of heaven and it was going to be home from home for God there. And uh, so when we read in the last chapter of Exodus, chapter 40, verse 34, on its completion, it says that the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now, psychologists tell us that our homes do the same. Uh, But God's tabernacle spoke powerfully about who he was. And they tell us the same about our homes. They speak volumes about who we are, about our habits and the choices that we make for lifestyles. And uh, I believe our church buildings do exactly the same. And I could say to you, you know, have a think about it. What does our building at Milton Baptist Church say about who we are, say about God? But also, uh, I just want to leave you with this. What, 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 is, what does it say about ourselves? Because in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, it says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. What do we, what do we say about God? What does me, Bob Mackay, say about God? One commentator said this about the book of Exodus. He said, the book moves from slavery to worship, from Israel's bondage to Pharaoh, to its bonding with God. And more importantly, it says, the book moves from enforced construction of the buildings for Pharaoh to glad and obedient offering of the people for a building of the worship of God. If I were to ask what the book of Exodus was all about, some of us might say, well, it's about the Israelites being set free from uh, the the Egyptians, which is true. Or maybe you would say it's the crossing of the Red Sea. Or maybe you would say it's God giving Moses the law. But actually, it's about God wanting to dwell with his people so that they will become the vehicle that will draw others to love and to serve God. 
And let's bring it back as we close. What about us? What about our church buildings? What about our homes? How do they reflect God? What about us as individuals? How do we reflect God? How do we reflect Jesus? God used so many people to build the tabernacle. He filled them with the Holy Spirit to complete the task. And I want us this morning just to take that minute to ponder and just think about offering the work of our hands to God. What do we do every day, every week, year in, year out? And offer the work that we do to him. Think about the support the work of our hands can offer to other people. Think about the talent that we have that we can exercise on behalf of God. Think of all the ways that they will represent the way we worship God. The way we will represent us being a follower of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we know how much you love just to dwell amongst your people. You did it in the Garden of Eden. You did it in the tabernacle. You dwelt amongst us with Jesus when he was here on earth. And you will dwell amongst us forever in heaven. And we just thank you now that you are, haven't left us alone, that you're here, that you sent your Holy Spirit to be with us, to live in us, to lead us, to guide us, to encourage us and equip us to be the people of God. So this morning we just pray that uh, you enable us to be the people of God in our families, in our homes, in our workplaces and in our communities. In Jesus' name. Amen. Next week we'll be back in the building and uh, we have a very special service of commissioning for Sam Boyle. Sam is about to head off to uh, All Saints Church in Woodford Green, East London to be the children's worker. So we just want to celebrate with him, pray with him, anoint him and send him on his way with God's blessing from Milton Baptist Church for his new position at All Saints in Woodford Green. So we uh, love to see you there. If you want to come, please book in for that. And if you're living locally, it's still time for you to pop over to Ash Ashcombe Park at the top of the hill near the coffee shop and uh, we'll be gathering there for a picnic at half past 11. See you soon. God bless.